and welcome to the How Airway Training video for Beaufort County Community College. We're going to go over a couple things that the, we're going to be using this mannequin for in the different classes at the community college. Uh, it's primar primarily an airway trainer, but it can also be used uh, in, in CPR scenarios. Uh, first and foremost, this thing can be used for simple intubations all the way up to and including difficult airway scenarios because of the different ways that the pneumatics work on this mannequin. We're going to go over some of the equipment that you can use with it as far as uh, endo endotracheal tubes, nasal airways, that kind of stuff. Uh, we will go over some of the nuances of changing out some of the equipment and how to operate some of the switches as well as some of the cleaning tips and tricks with, with this mannequin. We want these mannequins to last a long time. They are extremely expensive, and so the more, the longer we can have these mannequins stay with us, the better off we're going to be, which means that the more equipment that we can buy later on in the EMS program. So thank you so much for your time up, up ahead uh, with this. This may be a little bit of a long video. I'm thinking it's going to probably be about 30 minutes long. So pause, go get you something to drink. Uh, and snack on and sit down and listen to what we we have to say because I think there's going to be a lot of really important information for this. Here are a couple numbers that you need to remember. First the intubation blade size. It should never be any bigger than a number four miller or a three and a half mac. Uh, that's just going to be what we're, we're going to have to use and that's actually a pretty decent sized blade to be honest. As far as oral intubation, the maximum ET tube size needs to be no bigger than a 7.5. Um, everything that I read seems to encourage around a 7.0 ET tube. If you do nasal intubation, which I know not a lot of people practice that anymore, 6.5. MPA, if we're going to be using an MPA, uh, either an 8 millimeter slash 32 French is going to be the max. Um, those those are, are going to be one of those things where it's probably going to be very difficult in a new mannequin like this to to get a full-size 32 French in. Recommend maybe a 7.5 at the biggest. When you're done with the mannequin, make sure you clean it. It needs to be cleaned with mild soap. Joy dishwashing detergent works really good. Whatever you do, do not use Goo Gone. That will totally destroy the plastic and the rubber. We'll go over some of the switches and the knobs at the base of the mannequin. And they're pretty much self-explanatory. You turn something on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to either activate or deactivate something. The, uh, you're going to have to pressurize the system at first, and you're going to see the pressure gauge that is, that is up there. And, and that's going to be really important because we want to make for sure that we stay within the recommended uh, pressure. We want to stay in the green and if you don't and you also have to flip up that knob that says hold. If you don't flip up the knob that says hold it's not going to hold any air. Again just be careful you don't want to over inflate the system. If you do over inflate the system you will damage it and that will result into uh, obviously the, the mannequin not working appropriately. Once you uh, once you're done with the system, you just flip the switch down uh, to release and your air will drain right back out. You can also use the BVM if you don't have the little gray thing that come with it. It's kind of a pain to get on there just because it's just, it just is. Uh, if you use one of the BVMs that we've got that has a, that has a blow off pressure valve, just know that you're going to have to disable that pressure valve as you're as you're trying to fill the mannequin up full of air because it's just not going to it's just not going to let you fill it up just because of that pressure valve is doing what it's supposed to do once you get through that again you see where it just goes back down once you get through all of that and get the get the system pressurized up now you can start manipulating your switches like you would want to do again do not over pressurize this system you'll you'll break it flip it up flip your switch up for hold pressurize your system once it's pressurized, if you flip the knob up for your lungs to, to disabled, that's going to mimic um, dropping a lung. Uh, 
Um, so if you're if you're running a scenario where you've got a student who needs to decompress, then you're going to flip the switch up for disable, and that will that will be um, be how you you'll mimic that. Uh, important that you only use the second intercostal space for this mannequin whenever you're managing uh, attention in the thorax. Now this switch here that I'm flipping up and down uh, mimics the laryngospasms. Uh, this, this switch here mimics the pharyngeal swelling and your last one mimics or will simulate tongue edema. So if you've got someone with an allergic reaction or they've got some kind of laryngospasm going on then you will activate those as well. On the bottom right beside hold if you've got a pneumothorax then obviously you want to make you want to 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 flip that because that's going to charge that part of the system. Now when you do just remember that um, what you're what you're going to have when you when you disable a lung that side of the lung is just not going to inflate if you're if you're wanting to try and set your patient up so that they so that your student has to do an actual decompression they're they're going to have you're going to have to flip the pneumothorax button on the bottom in addition to disabling that lung we're going to go over how to replace the pneumothorax tube air tube in the mannequin the chest is is pretty much just velcroed on so you just take and pull the velcro off of the chest flip it over uh, you're going to see the simulated rib cage here and this thing is going to be very tight to get out as far as getting that air tube out what um, you're probably going to wind up having to do is just grab that chest plate flip it over and you're going to see these tubes in the back. You got to be really careful not to tear anything. These things are, are just basically glued into the chest. Um, what I did and what I probably would recommend that you do is actually slid the tube over as far in, into one direction, either left or to the right. Uh, so that it kind of gives you more play to, to get the thing out. And basically once you slide it over a little bit and you just start working, you can un attach one of the tubes from that T and and it will slide right on out. It takes, again it takes a little bit of work. Don't don't totally don't manhandle it because it will you 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 can break it. And then you gotta ease this thing out. Again it's not gonna come out um, easy peasy but it will it will come out with with minimal force. Once you get this get the tubes out you just pop pop them off of your connector tees, get you some new tubes and replace them. Uh, what there there's some baby powder in the in this kit and it comes for a couple different reasons. You you may want to put baby powder on on the mannequin's chest and face where you're at. It kind of keeps the, the rubber from being quite so tacky. But whenever you're replacing these tubes you want to use this baby powder as well. It keeps the tubes from getting stuck and it makes it just a lot easier to, to go in. Okay, there's the baby powder. Don't be afraid to use that baby powder. It really does make a huge difference in trying to slide it in and out. The first time I did this, um, just messing with it, it just and I didn't use the baby powder. It just totally was a just a just aggravating something to try and get it through. So yeah, just put your baby powder on there, get it good and lubed up. Um, you're kind of like you know, for example, it's probably no different than using graphite on a on a padlock somewhere. So just get it slid in. I had one tube. You hit connect one tube to the T piece. Uh, you slide your other tube in. And you see me just showing you how how it kind of sits in there. Once you get it gets that first tube in, you'll slide the second tube in a little bit, and it's again it's it's a little tedious, but you can you can do it.
once you kind of get it partially in you're then you're then going to take that your your T connector and you're going to have to have to slide that slide that T connector in on that um, on that tube and again just don't it's going to take a little bit of work don't over don't don't just just don't manhandle this thing and be rough with it because you, you you're going to rip those things out once you get this thing like you want it just put your chest piece back on slide your um slide your chest your 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 cover back over the chest and you are you're good to to continue on and then as you see there, that's why i was saying earlier you you can only use the second intercostal space there because physically that's just you're not going to stick you're not going to decompress anywhere else removing the neck insert is pretty straightforward process just be careful uh, you can see at the top of this thing that it that there are two little clear pins holding part of this uh, skin in so you're going to have to pop that out first be really careful because this is actually attached to the entire insert and it and it can be easily damaged so just pop it out pull those two little ribbons and that's that's all you're going to need to do to get that popped out once you have your airway insert pulled out you can now put in a new airway this is going to be your surgical crike airway right here and you just will slide it in what you did not see me do is you did not see me put baby powder on that insert and yes I put baby powder all on that it really helps it slide in the paraffin paper will go over and what this does is this will mimic your cricothyroid membrane now you're supposed to be able to pull this paper off but to be honest and you're going to see a video in a little bit of me trying to get that paper pulled off and honest honestly I could not get that paper to separate I know it's supposed to separate but I could not for the life of me get it to separate so at a certain point you just say the heck with it put the paper and the little film on there and just and just go with it because honestly it's just not going to hurt anything it's it would probably help it seal a little bit better because when you put this insert into the pa to the to the neck it does cause it to leak a little bit now you saw there's a, a shiny side and a dull side the shiny side goes down into the into the neck and the dull side goes out if you flip it around it will not fit as well and the way the insert is made it's just it's made to go in a certain way and you just have to take your time just like with the paraffin paper and get the get each and every one of those little pins through that hole and it is a game of patience so if you are an impatient person this will this will be a task for you to stay calm and again if you're when you, when you get this on like this you you can now practice your surg, surgical crikes there you go uh, doesn't doesn't go on as pretty as it probably should but it 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 does enough to work for you to practice your your cricothyrotomies that you, that you need to do and once you get it in you can actually feel the landmarks pretty pretty decently I, I wouldn't say it's totally like a, a real life person but it's it's pretty doggone close that you can get your um, your landmarks down now when you get ready to pull it out you're gonna have to you uh, you're have to pull that 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 fake skin off and then take your ribbons and pull out and, and, and start pulling that insert your your paraffin paper is going to be cut so you're just just go ahead and pull pull out and just know that 
it's going to tear. It's a one and done thing. Now what you see here is the tracheostomy insert. I don't really see us using that a whole lot. Uh, you probably could use it if you were just wanting to practice maybe a, a needle crack or something like that. The, uh, the surgical crack is insert the one with the V on it is going to be our most accurate and I would probably suggest that you just stay away from the the, the tracheostomy insert. I don't think that's going to be totally accurate for us at all and it's not going to offer much of a, any benefit. Can you see though I'm um, just kind of going through it it is just it's just very tedious getting that paraffin paper on on those little pins and you have to do the do each and every one of those little pins. Now you see that the paper doesn't go as deep or as long as the entire insert. So just remember that you want that paraffin paper to start up at the top of the neck and the bottom two pins are not going to have any paper on them. It is it's just the way it's made and just kind of kind of go with the flow. Once you're done with the insert, same thing as before, you want to make sure that you pull the skin off. As long as you don't cut the skin, you can reuse it. If uh, you're going to cut on the skin, just once you're done with it, just, just throw that skin away. Uh, just can be careful pulling that stuff off. We don't want to break the pins. And make for sure that when you set your insert down in the neck that you cross over the ribbons like we've got them crossed here so that when you pull the ribbons, it'll just pop it out. And again, if you use... Um, if you use baby powder, that's gonna that that will work out really good. You can change out the inserts to the tracheostomies. Uh, it's just easy as, as popping this in and out. The this particular insert kind of hinges in the back, so it it will pop open and, and let you change out those inserts. Thanks to a little bit of movie magic, we're going to put the original insert back in. This allows you to intubate this patient and bag them uh, before it was put in. There was some baby powder put on. Um, now, it's not going to slide in quite that good. So what you're going to have to do is uh, set it up on top of those ribbons and take your fingers and press it down into, into the neck. Once you're done with the neck, then you'll pop your skin over the top of those two uh, pins in the top of the neck and you should be good for intubation and or BVM. Once you're done with the mannequin make for sure that you clean the mannequin off. The uh, oils on people's hands are going to dirty this thing up. One thing that I forgot to say at the beginning of the video is that we probably need to train like we're going to be working with real life patients so we need to be actually using gloves. That'll help protect the, the mannequins a lot, keep the, the body oils off of, the, off of these mannequins and help them last a lot longer. But if for whatever reason they get dirty, remember you need to clean it with some kind of mild detergent, something like Joy dishwashing detergent is gonna be your better thing. So put your, put your little mannequin back in the box, take all the equipment, and, and put it back in there. Now before you put it back in this little bag, make for sure that the pressure in your in your chambers have been released so make for sure that it that your thing does not say hold for air pressure that it says release because we do not want this thing to be in storage with that pressure brad, bladder full of air another thing if you're going to be moving from place to place with this thing because uh, here's your little 
box of inserts. Whatever you use, guys, on a side note, just make for sure that you let Billy and Larry know, Jack know, let somebody know that you've used stuff on it. They'll re they'll order more stuff for it. They won't. That that's what it's there for is for us to use. They're not going to say a word to you. Obviously, it's not going to go in that bag. So um, you're going to stick this little cardboard box over into the corner here and and call it good. Uh, put your little gray gray ventilation bag or pressurization bag in in with this little blue in the blue satchel as well as your powder and any other loose items that need to go in there that makes it just easier to keep again do not store this in your car do not under any circumstances let it stay in a hot vehicle it is not supposed to be in any temperature environment greater than 95 degrees it'll start it'll break this stuff down then you try and use it and we're going to have equipment failures this mannequin is around Twenty-seven hundred dollars to three thousand dollars. So we we can't get a whole lot of these things. So we want to take care of what we have. Um, do make for sure that your your baby powder is closed because if you um if you don't, then what's going to happen is it's going to spill out inside of that little blue satchel. Yeah. Once you're done, package it all up, and you will you can then take it back to the college or let somebody know that they need to pick it up as long as it just gets back to where it's going guys I want to really thank you for your time I know this was probably 22 minutes of of uh, listening to me talk about different things with this mannequin I really do thank you so much for your for your time and effort I'm also going to upload the PDF for the uh, for for this mannequin so that you guys can look at it and, and kind of glance over it. I'm sure that there's probably something in this video that I have omitted or forgotten to include and if I did I'm I'm truly sorry but again I do thank you guys so much for your time that that you have taken to to listen to me talk about this mannequin.